Many people try to learn AI through tutorials, but inside the industry, the real experts are learning from reading papers. I learned this back in 2017 when I was an engineering manager at Meta. A paper came out called Attention is All You Need. And this paper changed everything. So today, I'm going to walk you through the five papers that will give you a strong foundation, how to read them efficiently, and where to find more papers without getting lost. And by the way, this video is sponsored by Warp but more on them later. Let's start with how to actually read papers. Here's what most people do. They find the paper and then they try to read it like a novel, trying to understand every single word in the paper. And that's not gonna work. So let me give you five tips that actually works when you're reading papers. Tip one is to set goals that actually make sense. So Andrew Yang, he's a co-founder of Coursera. He's also famous for teaching many of the best machine learning courses ever. And he says, if you want a basic understanding of a topic, read Read between 15 to 20 papers and if you want deeper expertise read 50 to 100 and that's a good goal if you're aiming for expert level research type roles in a specific area but honestly that's a pretty high bar and if you're just starting out and you're still figuring out what you even want to focus on I will start with about five papers when you finish them celebrate because it's not easy reading these papers then ask yourself do I want to keep going on this topic or do I want to learn something else the point is to not burn out, use short cycles, 5 to 10 papers, reflect, repeat, and pivot. Pick a topic and make a list. For example, if you want to learn natural language processing or Asians or build a better foundation in AI, then make a list of five papers. So if your goal is to get a good understanding of the foundations, I would start with the attention is all you need paper. This paper introduced the transformers which made modern large language models possible. And I'm going to walk through four more like this. But first, let me give you the method that I use to read so you don't get stuck while reading them. Now, once you have a list of papers, you want to skim through the titles, abstracts, figures, and graphs. Spend about 10% of your time on each paper just to decide if this is worth a deeper read. This is more like sorting, not studying. If a paper seems off topic for you, set it aside. There's no guilt involved find another paper that fits better. Then for the papers that do pass your skim test, do not start at page one and grind through. Read the introduction and the conclusion first. These sections will tell you what the paper is trying to do and what the authors claim they achieved. Then scan related work section to see if it fits in the field. If all of that makes sense, dive into the core method or the results. If that sounds good too, that's when you actually start reading the rest of the paper, but feel free to skip any parts that don't really make sense right away. Even the experts do this when they're reading, just move on and come back to any section if you need it later. And the only way to get better at this is through practice. Over time, you're going to learn common patterns. You'll know where to look first and you'll read figures faster, understand things faster, and you'll know which sections matter more to you. You. So give yourself time. This is a long-term investment, not a one-week sprint. Now that you have the reading strategy, let's apply it. Paper number one introduced the transformer. Here's the abstract, which basically talks about how before this, most language models used recurrent neural networks which processed text one word at a time. The transformer threw that out. Instead, it uses something called self-attention. Basically, when the model looks at any word in a sentence, it can instantly weigh the importance of all the other words at the same time. This made training way faster and it lets models handle much longer, more complex context. This paper made large language models possible, which is our next topic. Next is the GPT-3 paper from 2020, which showed that if you scale up a model, GPT-3, for example, had 175 billion parameters, the model can develop emergent capability, which means it started to show new abilities that it wasn't directly trained on. More specifically, in-context learning, which means the model can perform new tasks without any fine tuning. If you just give it a few examples in the prompt and it figures it out. Translation, summarization, whatever you want it to do. It shifted from thinking about how do we train a model to do everything to how do we prompt a model. So the quality of your instructions control the quality of the output. And this is why prompt engineering became such a big deal. And if you've been prompting more than coding, check out Warp. Prompt-driven coding environments like Warp 
are going to become the new way of building production-ready products. With their new release, Warp is where the IDE and CLI finally merge into one seamless environment for coding with AI agents. Here's what that means in practice. Warp combines three things into one. You start with the natural language prompt to describe what you want to build. Warp generates the code, and you can jump directly into its built-in editor for review and tweaks. And you deploy to production directly from the built-in terminal, all in a single workflow. It works across the full development lifecycle, manages multiple long-running agents seamlessly, and has a native in-app editing so you don't have to constantly context switch between tools. Warp is actively used by over 700,000 engineers, data scientists, and product managers, including teams at 56% of four Fortune 500 engineering organizations. Warp is free to use and you can try their premium features for just $1 your first month with the code Gene. Link is in the description. Now back to the papers. Synthetic data is becoming a game changer for training large language models. Because these models need huge amounts of high quality data to learn. There's only so much data that you can get from the real world. So this paper talks about artificially generating training data usually created by models like GPT-4 to help train or fine tune other models. According to this DeepMind research, there are three key lessons. Synthetic data is definitely needed, but it works best when combined with real data. Training only on synthetic data can cause quality to degrade over time. So we need to perform checks to make sure that the data is accurate. Next is the RAG paper from 2020, RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. This is a solution we have today for fixing the biggest weaknesses of large language models like hallucination, outdated training data, and the black box problem where we don't understand where the answer is coming from. RAG works by getting fresh relevant information from an external database before the model answers your question so it isn't stuck with whatever it was originally trained on. This survey breaks down how RAG has evolved over time through three phases. Native RAG is the original version that simply retrieves documents and feeds them to the model. Advanced RAG is more optimized with smarter pre and post-retrieval steps. Then there's the modular RAG, the most customizable approach, where each component can be swapped or tuned for domain-specific use cases. This technique makes answers more accurate, up-to-date, and verifiable, which helps improve the overall reliability of AI systems. This last paper is a more recent paper about MCP, which stands for Model Context Protocol. Before MCP, if you wanted your AI models to interact with external tools like API databases or enterprise software, you had to manually build custom connectors for every single tool and every single model. MCP is a layer that gives them the ability to take more complex, multi-step actions. An AI could fetch data from one system, process it, and send a request to another system. This is important because RAG gives models real information and MCP lets them take real action. So together, they connect AI to the real world. This is the direction that AI is headed today. Okay, so you're ready to start reading. Let's say you finished the five papers that I recommended and you want to find more. Where do you go find them? Well, here are four sources that I like and how to use them. First is Hugging Face. This site organizes paper with models, data sets, trending papers across many areas like image generation, video generations, and a bunch more. It's also super easy to browse. This stilled AI has a list of papers going back to 2010. They are organized by topic and by year, so it's useful if you want to trace how an area has evolved over time. And if you like to see the story from early ideas to the current state, you want to start here. Deep Learning Monitor shows hot and fresh papers, or you can add any topic that you are interested in so you can monitor them. You can also filter by weeks or months because new papers come out almost every day. So you can set up monitors with keywords for areas that you care about. So you get a small focus stream to check. Archive Sanity. Archive is a standard place where researchers post papers. It's not always organized in the most friendly way. So it helps if you already know what you're looking for. Using the search feature, you can search for keywords that you're interested in. I also keep a short list on my website with these links plus other free resources like books and newsletters. Link is in the description. Now YouTube thinks that you should watch this video next, so I'll see you there.